Chapter 18, The Art of Negotiation When you hear the word negotiation, do you imagine a bunch of people in suits in a boardroom arguing over money? Yeah, I did too when I started. These days, negotiation to me looks like a series of emails. Me. It was great meeting with you today about your metaverse project set in the Meowverse where ancient Egyptian cats have come back to rule the world. Based on what you want for this project, here's my proposal with details on how I can help in my timeline. The cost for this would be $5,000. Client. Any way you could work for a percentage of the project revenue? Me. No, I only work for my rate. If you want me to remove a rewrite, I could do it for $4,000. Or I could bundle with other deliverables and give you a 10% discount. That package would be $10,000, not including the discount. Client. Can you do the large package but expedite the process? We need all of those deliverables ASAP. Me. Sure, I can shave three business days off my package for a rush fee of $3,000. Client. Any way we could do the 10K package with a rush fee for 8K? Me. Unfortunately not. I would want to make sure I have enough time to do a great job for you and your feline friends on this project, so I can't work below the quoted 10K with the rush fee of 3K. But as I mentioned, I can give you a 10% discount off of that final quote. Client. Sounds good. Let's move forward with that quote so we can honor the legacy of these ancient Egyptian cats. As a freelancer, what you just read looks like setting boundaries, carving out the scope of the project, and offering different packages, discounts, and bundles based on what your client wants and what is worth your time. In other words, a negotiation. I prefer to discuss money stuff over email, but in the rare exception that I negotiate a deal on a call, I'll follow up with an email afterward to make sure we get any decisions in writing. Emotions can affect memory, but email is forever, so keep good backups. The Basics of Negotiation for Freelance Writers As I mentioned in earlier sections of this book, I recommend reading Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference, or watch his masterclass course on how to negotiate. He breaks down essentials of human nature and psychology that are important to understand. Even though freelancing isn't intense dealmaking, being able to negotiate with clients is a skill that will pay off every time you begin a new project. After you hop off a discovery call with a potential client, you'll probably send them a project proposal that details the services you can provide based on what their needs are and how you can help. This proposal should include pricing, timeline, billing instructions, and more. Next, the client will either A. Accept your proposal and the project will begin B. Counter your proposal with a different rate, pay structure, or set of deliverables C. Reject your proposal or ghost you when option B happens, the negotiation takes place. How to give your clients more value. When I'm in a negotiation, I'll occasionally add some complimentary bonuses to my fixed rate projects, such as a complimentary SEO strategy session or a complimentary handout on best practices for the client's project. Your goal as a freelancer should be to make sure your potential clients feel like you're giving them extraordinary value. This begins with the quality of your work, but it can also help to be generous with other resources or things that your clients might find useful. Any freebies should be clearly defined in your contract. That is, one optional and complimentary up to 50-minute strategy session conducted remotely via video or phone call, so that both you and your client understand the scope of these complimentary bonuses. You can also give a new client discount to encourage them to take a chance on you. Or, you could offer a free project proposal, where you outline how you're going to tackle a project. It's up to you how you want to structure these add-ons or other ways to give your client peace of mind, knowing they've spent their money wisely. At the end of the day, delivering reliable, high-quality work is the core of what creates value for your clients. Any additions are simply marketing tools and ways to persuade a client who's on the fence about your rate or hiring you. The most important rule in dating negotiating, don't be desperate. Freelancing is a bit like dating. You can't be desperate. You have to be secure and confident in yourself and your abilities before you enter the ring. Otherwise, you'll find yourself ending up in a compromised position and taking a royalty deal from Shark Tank's Mr. Wonderful in perpetuity. This is why future chapters of this book will go over mindset and ways to ride out the emotional roller coaster of the feast or famine life that freelancing can feel like, and how to find calm even in those early, uncertain days of being a freelance writer. Understanding the economic concept of opportunity cost will help you walk away from projects that aren't going to pay enough or be a good fit for you. The concept of opportunity cost states that the cost of your decision is the missed opportunities you could have pursued in place of what you chose. For example, if I choose to stay inside on a sunny day, the cost of my decision is the opportunity to catch some rays and vitamin D. 
The cost of taking on a project that you're not excited about may be higher than you think. When your energy is zapped from working with a client who doesn't value you, it's much harder to go out and find the projects and clients who do value your time. When to walk away. Want to know what might actually win you a project? Standing your ground on your rate and being willing to walk away if a potential client can't meet you there. I can't tell you how many projects have accepted my quote even after they said they were unable to pay that much. Remember, your clients are negotiating just as much as you are. If they can't meet you where you're at, it's often better to stand your ground. It will reinforce the perspective in their mind that you're worth the rate you're quoting, and I've had clients who have saved up to hire me and came back around, sometimes two years after our initial meeting. If you're always chasing your shadow or clients, then they will never pursue you. The goal as a freelancer is to become a high-end service for your clients. While in some cases I've given out slight discounts on larger packages, it's important to not overuse these tactics. Don't give out continuous discounts or bend to your clients too often, as it won't create the kind of dynamic you want. Trust me, how much you want to get into the weeds of negotiating your rate is up to you. If you've been working to hone your skills and your knowledge, you have a valuable asset that people will pay well for. In my mind, it's better to just find better clients than to work with those who can't or choose not to afford your rate. Amy's Field Notes The top 1% of freelancers work for the top 1% of clients. Before I hop on calls with clients these days, I have to check and see if my rates are aligned with their budget, which helps me protect my time as well as my potential client's time. Today, I did just that and the client fired back. I don't like discussing money before meeting on a business engagement. Which is odd because usually business engagements require an agreement on price before they move forward. You wouldn't hire an accountant without confirming their rates. Why would you try and hire a freelancer without understanding their basic price range? As someone who has hired freelancers in the past, I've loved getting price clarity before hopping on calls and moving the ball forward. I like to understand their hourly rate, any package pricing, and get to know them and their work. I expect that same courtesy from the clients who want to hire me. The top freelancers want to work with the top clients, so those who wish to attract and retain top talent will need to show that they're a good client to work with from the start. And what better way than respecting your boundaries and the value of your time? I create these voiceovers using Wondercraft AI, a text-to-speech tool that speaks in your voice so you can create more podcasts, audiobooks, and voiceovers, all by just dropping in some text. Use my code SUDO50, S-U-T-O-5-0, or the link in the description below to get 50% off your Wondercraft AI subscription. I get a small commission if you use my code, so thanks for your support. Sending creativity and good writing vibes your way. Amy.